1800s, church planters, including husband and wife teams such as Albert and Ellen Lane, began opening up new work in the eastern states of America. Between 1896 and 1905, Mrs. Lulu Whiteman alone planted at least 12 churches in New York State. It was hard going. 100 years ago, in 1922, the Adventist Church planted 75 new churches. Last year, it planted nearly two and a half thousand. In 1922, it took nearly five days before a new church was planted. Last year, it took 3.6 hours. Today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church continues to grow only as it keeps its focus on starting new groups of believers. Church planting is the most effective way to grow and expand the church. Leading the way are faithful global mission pioneers, pioneering the gospel, starting new groups of believers in new areas. Where possible, they work among their own people. They know the language, they know the culture, and they put Christ's method of ministry into practice. Receiving only a small living stipend, they work sacrificially to spread the good news. Supporting the work of pioneers and other church planters are the global mission centers, which help us more effectively reach out to people of other religions. Vast people groups, largely untouched by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, the ministry of these global mission centers goes largely unpublicized, but they go quietly about their work, finding methods and models to make the Adventist message understandable, attractive, and meaningful to people from radically different worldviews. Please pray for global mission pioneers and other church planters and our global mission center directors. Pray for these dedicated workers on the most challenging edge of mission, sharing the Adventist message with every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The annual sacrifice offering helps global mission start new groups of believers among unreached people, often in the most challenging places in the world. You can give to the annual sacrifice offering online or in church. Simply mark your tithe envelope, annual sacrifice offering. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. I'm Amy Farfan. I have the music today, but the Farfan family is mostly sick. Daniel's homesick. So we have um, Esther Farley, who's here visiting from her church, and Kelly Morrell, who's here visiting from her church, who are going to help lead the music. And Kelly is going to do our opening prayer. Sorry about that. Let's bow our heads for prayer this morning. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to be in the house of God. We are so grateful to have a place where we can come together and lift your name up and worship you and praise you and lay our burdens at your feet. We ask that your spirit would come in here this morning, that you would lead the song service, that you would lead the speakers, that you would lead our interactions with one another, Lord God. We want the uh, words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts to be pleasing in your sight. In your name we pray, amen. So we're going to start with Higher Ground, number 625. <laughs>
So we just did the first and fourth of that one. And we're going to do Trust and Obey, which is number 590. And the same thing, we're up for, I think, the first and fourth. We're setting a high standard that we should be on the higher ground, that we should always trust and obey. And our last hymn is Amazing Grace. So Amazing Grace is where we go when we fail to meet the high standards we have set and that we always know that, that God's grace is limitless when we don't trust and obey and we don't reach for the higher ground all the time. And for this one, we'll do all but verse 3.
right, everyone. Just come and get our offering buckets so we can collect the children's offering. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Whoa, thank you all for your very generous offering. Still coming in. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys a story today that takes place in a place far, far away. There's a lot of continents in the world, but... Well, actually, it's in the same continent, but not in Kenya. It's on the west side of Africa. Um, nope, that's the city. Maybe Nigeria. I'm not really quite sure where, which country this comes from, but I'm going to tell you a story about a little boy. His name was Swami. Can anybody say Swami? Okay, Swami was a little boy <clears throat> in the country of Nigeria, and he loved playing with his friends always by the river. Now, if you lived in Africa by a river, what are some of the animals that you might see? Gazelles. I see some gazelles, yeah. Snake. Or snake. You could see some snakes, yes. Maybe a um, leopard in a tree. Leopards in trees, maybe. Um, hippos and uh, fish. Hippos and fish, nobody has hit it yet. They're really big, and they're really... A crocodile? Crocodile. Crocodiles. That's the one. That's the one. So his mom was always telling him, Swami, I don't want you playing right by the river. There's too many crocodiles in there. And when it rains, the river gets really, really muddy, and you can't see them coming on you because they're just right under the surface. But it's dark in the water because of the mud. But Swami didn't, li didn't listen very well to his mom because sometimes when he was playing, he just wanted to play and have fun. But every night before he went to sleep, Swami would pray with, with his mom, and his mom would always tell him, Swami, if you're ever in trouble, always pray to God, and God will help you, and Jesus will help you. Swami was like, yeah, I'm a little kid. You know, maybe when I get older, then I can you know, believe in God and stuff. But right now, I think I'm just having too much fun playing. So one day... Swami was playing with his friends by the river. And it had been raining that week. And what happens when it rains? It gets, muddy. it gets muddy. And then the river was really, really dark. So he was just playing. There's a ball that came a little bit closer to the edge. And before he knew it, our crocodile jumped up. It grabbed him by the leg and pulled him under the water. And you know what? Crocodiles usually don't eat their prey right away. They just like to put them under their den, and they wait until they're 
they start to decompose. So the crocodile didn't eat him, but he put him in there. Swami got stunned when he was put in the water because what happens when the crocodile grabbed him? It rolls him around and roll him around and around like this in his water until he kind of lost his consciousness and he was under the den. Well, the crocodile left him alone and he went away. Swami woke up and he was in the den of a crocodile. It was dark and it was cold at this point because the sun had already gone down and he remembered what his mom told him. What did his mother tell him? That's right. His mom said, if you ever find yourself in any trouble, just pray. And Swami started praying like he's never prayed before. He said, Jesus, I know that I don't really pay attention to what my mom tells me sometimes, but I remember this. If you would get me out of here, get me out of this situation without any problems, I promise I will serve you the rest of my life. Swami was very young. He was about maybe six or seven when he remembered this prayer. And you know what? He started looking around. He moved this, he moved that. And he looked, and he wasn't too far away from the bank. And he climbed out of the crocodile's den, and he ran home. He ran all the way home. Now, the boys that were with him had already told his parents what happened. Oh, Swami got eaten by the crocodile. Swami was taken down by the crocodile. The parents were at home crying, very much upset. They hear a knock on the door, and who is it? It's Swami. It's Swami. They're like, what happened? And he was covered from top to, bo to, to bottom with all kinds of mud. And then he said what had happened to him. He said when he woke up, he was in the crocodile's den, and he remembered to pray. And he promised that he was going to serve God if he got him out of that jam. And he sure enough did. Swami grew up to be an, a missionary, an evangelist. He was out there preaching the word of God, and he always told the story about how God delivered him from the crocodile's den. Do we have any other stories about God delivering anybody from a den? Yes. Daniel in the lion's den. That's right. So these stories are not just in the Bible, just like fairy tales. This really happened. And just like it happened in Swami in Africa, it happened to Daniel a long time ago in the lion's den. And the same God that delivered Daniel delivered Swami from the crocodile's den. Who would like to pray for us today? Play for us, Cooper. Everybody close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please help us to have a wonderful day and remember you as our Savior. Please help us to go home and always worship you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And go back to your seats. Good morning, church. I have a nice little crowd this morning. Good to see all y'all smiling faces. Everybody looks like they're pretty much awake. And just a reminder, today, immediately following the church service, we are having potluck. So this is our, our first time trying out this third Sabbath potluck. Um, and then also there's going to be potluck next week, but Ellie will have some more to, to share about that. Um, also, today, Pathfinders and Adventurers are going to be meeting this afternoon, 1.30. And I'm going to go ahead and invite Hugh up. He's got something that he would like to share with us concerning personal ministries. Good morning. All right, a couple of weeks ago, Edmund Church received this envelope. And it says, uh, personal ministries leader, and then someone wrote my name on the front, so I guess uh, it's official now. Inside, we have little advertisements. I know you can't see this, so I'll put it up on the over. There it is. And then what they have inside are pocket signs, okay? I know you've seen these out front look like this. During the month of November, they are offering a half price deal on these. So if you order 100, it's the regular price is, is um, $10. So if you order during the month of November, it's um, $5. Okay. 
So when I've got 50 of these to hand out, if my wife would love to help me, come on up. <laughs> Volunteered you. Sorry, honey. Okay, thank you. Like I said, during the month of November, it's half price. So if you would like one, please raise your hand. We'll get, get one to you. Thank you. All right, and then Madison, she has got an announcement concerning Parkview. Hello. You guys, I don't come up here often. I'm usually over there hiding away. Um, so I'm Madison, as he said. I am go to Parkview Adventist Academy, and I'm on student association. And November 5th, from 6.30 to 9.30, we have gym night. So it's just a bunch of games, and we're going to have food. And um, honestly, as you can see here, um, four and under, they're free. And 5 to 17 is 5, and 18 plus is $7. But it's just a fundraiser for Essay, so we can um, just bring more fun things to the school. So that will be all. Thank you. All right, and then I'm also going to. Oh, here is Jeff. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Jeff the microphone. <laughs> I was just gonna remind uh, everybody that has a position and volunteers that uh, if you haven't filled out the the uh, Sherling volunteers uh, background check, there's a lot. Um, I understand um, that there's a lot of people that still need to do that. So um, if you don't know what that is, then get with Teresa. Um, and if you do know what it is, there are still and need the instructions. There should still be those handouts uh, in the back. Yeah, on the back table out there on the the credenza. And then if just in case, if you don't know who Teresa is, Teresa, could you just stand just just briefly? This is Teresa Reeves. So if you have any questions about getting that background check done and going through some of the training that they have, um, just touch base with her. And now I'm going to call up Pastor Ellie. He's going to talk to us about Creation Sabbath and the whole week-long celebration leading up to that. Thank you, Pastor. What starts tomorrow? It's the week of Creation Sabbath celebration that we're going to have here in the church. What does that entail? Every day of this week, we have certain types of activities for the families, for, the, for each member of the church. You should have received information via email, but uh, if you haven't uh, signed up for that and you need a hard copy, I got about 10 hard copies that I can provide for you. And if someone else needs more than, if I, if I have more than uh, 10 people, I'll make some more copies. But what's important it is that each day of the week, there's an activity uh, relating to the first day of creation, the second day of creation, third, all through uh, uh, Friday. And Friday, I doubled up the sixth and the seventh uh, day of creation. And then uh, we, uh, uh, we will have a special service, a special service on the 22nd, which is the next Sabbath. Worship service will be all dedicated towards uh, the Sabbath, uh, day, uh, the day of creation. But we also have activities following the worship service. Who knows what's going to happen after the worship service? I want to see how many of you all are paying attention. Huh? Before the nature walk. Potluck. Does everyone like potlucks? Okay. Well, Sandra needs some help on potlucks, right? She is the social director of, of our, our church, and she's going to be leading this uh, potluck event. So we need people to come and help with, the, with that potluck uh, Sabbath as well. After the potluck, yes, Amy, we will have our nature walk. Where? Martin Nature Center. Does everyone know where Martin Nature Center is at? Who does not know? <laughs> no, there's one. New person, she says she doesn't know. Yeah. 
If you follow the crowd, you'll be able to uh, to get there without a problem. <laughs> We hope that someone that's going to be leading knows the way to get over there. So it'll be. A, uh, so I have, I suggest that you all bring a, a change of clothes. Uh, where can you change clothes? Well, we got the restrooms, but we also have changing uh, uh, rooms in the back for the like for the baptismal uh, people that are doing that. So please uh, just uh, uh, be able to uh, bring their your clothes. So because. As soon as we have our, our potluck, and we hope to finish here no later than 1.30 so that we can get down to the nature park no later than 2 o'clock. We want to start the nature walk at 2 o'clock. So if you're going home, please, and, and want to participate from the walk there, please be there at the nature center by 2 o'clock. And then at 3.30 at the pavilion, we'll come back and we'll share stories because the purpose of the nature walk is for you to find something that has... Uh, that reminds you about creation or any specific Bible story that you may have. And we would like the families to stick together. And if you don't have a family, there's other people that you can just join in and, and just do this uh, little activity uh, together. It's going to be a fun time. So we hope to have from 3.30 to 5.30, we got the pavilion reserved. Thanks to Sandra, she was able to get that for us. And... Uh, and then we'll, that, that'll be the concluding that Vesper time there at that time. So please uh, keep in mind that we have this activity. Uh, you've received emails uh, on Friday. You received two different types of emails. One email was with all the information of the activities that I have here hard, as a hard copy, but it gives you a detail. And, and you all have... Uh, if you have children, there's an activity for the children in the back of the, uh, and at the last pages of that email as well. If you did not receive an email, probably you should probably check your spam folder or your, what's the other folder? The promotion folder. Please check those folders out because I know that some people have... Um, seen those in in that in those type of folders spam or promotion folders uh and if you did not receive one uh either contact me or or pastor tj so that we can make sure that you get that, that email um before sunday monday uh okay the next thing is that we have also people that uh, would like to join us on zoom we have a slide for that people that would like to join us on zoom um, there's uh, the meeting ID and also the password for that Zoom meeting. Uh, Janine and I will be uh, hosting that Zoom and we'll um, go through the different activities that uh, you uh, have um, already been pro provided through the email. And we just have a small little discussion. It's not going to take more than 20, 30 minutes at max to be able to share uh, this uh, little Bible study devotional type for the first, second, day, third. Okay, on Monday, we will not have the Zoom because we have church board meeting. So um, we will do Sunday and then skip on, uh, until Tuesday and so forth. We'll probably catch up on Monday and Tuesday at the same time at the Zoom. That's fine. Okay, so so scratch scratch Monday. Monday we will have Zoom, and Janelle will be hosting it on Monday. Okay, so uh, any questions? Are we all un understanding what we're going to be doing? We encourage the, even the other departments like Pathfinders and Adventures to be able to take time and join us there so that they can also have an opportunity. Sometimes they have those... Uh, uh, needs to have those, what did you call it, those um, honors. And you might be able to do some of those honors there. And the children and adults also, there's going to be the nature center will be open so you can see different uh, uh, animals and, and uh, ex exhibits that they have there at the nature center. So if those that cannot walk, for a long walk or whatever, then it's not really long. It's about a mile all the way around and so forth. 
you can go to the Nature Center and enjoy the exhibits there at the Nature Center and then meet with us at 3.30 at the pavilion. Thank you. Okay, I'm excited about that. So the, the long and short of it is check your email. If you didn't, if you're still not getting the church emails any, uh, any week, just, just let me know because if I get your email, then I can add you um, onto our email list. Um, but usually when you're first getting them, you might need to check your, your junk or your spam or your promotions folder uh, just to make sure that they're, they're in there. Um, and in that email is a link to download and print off these activities that will that you know we want you to go through with your family each night. So that's all in the email. If you didn't get the email or you're not very tech savvy, Ellie does have a few copies of those. So see him uh, before today ends to grab those. All right. And before Jeremy comes up for our call for tithes and offerings, we have a short little video. I know most of you have seen this before, but it's been a few months. And I uh, just wanted to share this with you all in terms of how to fill out a tithe envelope and, and, and how all that works in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you. Enjoy the last one we do. Enjoy that last one we do. No video. So I was when I was asked to do this, I kind of thought I would tell a little story about me and my mom and one of my favorite songs. So I wonder, I'll read this song, and I, hopefully I'll tie it into church budget here. Um, so it's, this is one of my favorite songs called Big House by Audio Adrenaline. How many of you guys have ever heard that song? How many of you haven't heard that song? Okay, well, here's, here's the lyrics. We couldn't play them today, but here's the lyrics. It goes, I don't know where you lay your head or where you call your home. I don't know where you eat your meals or where you talk on the phone. I don't know if you have a cook, a butler, or a maid. I don't know if you have some shelter, say a place to hide. I don't know if you live with friends in whom you can confide. I don't know if you've got a family, say a mom or dad. I don't know if you feel loved at all but I'll bet you wish you had. It's a, and then the, lyric, the chorus is, come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of room. We have big, a big, big table with lots and lots of food. We got lots and lots of food out there. And it's a big, big yard where we can play football. We've got a big yard out there too. And it says... And then it says, uh, it's a big, big house. It's my father's house. So I really didn't quite understand the lyrics or the meaning of this song until I actually went to a concert. I went to an audio adrenaline concert. And the guy got up on stage and he goes, you know, guys, you know what this song's about? He goes, it's about heaven. And I was like, really? It's about heaven? Oh, yeah. I come to think of it, it kind of is about heaven. And then... But, you know, and you know, kind of when you're a teenager, at least when I was a teenager, I kind of wanted to listen to a little bit more edgy music maybe than my parents did, you know? And I went back and I remember I was like, oh, you know, my mom's like, oh, I'm going to tell my mom all about this. This is, this is just an epiphany. I never knew that song was about heaven, you know? I'm gonna tell her all about it. And she says, what? You didn't realize that song was about heaven? I was like, I didn't. And so like, I thought I was going to pull one over on her and, you know, get her. They, you know, I knew a little bit more than she did. And she's like, nope, it's gotcha. <laughs> but, you know, I also think about this, you know, especially in this in these lyrics, you know, it talks about do you have a place to go? Do you have a place to eat? Do you have a place to hang out with friends? Do you have a place? Is there a place anywhere that you go that, you know, to use the uh, a term where everybody knows your name? Uh, where everybody, where you can feel comfortable, where you have a part of a community. I think 
that's what local church budget does. It helps support all of these, any ministries. It helps support any sort of ministry that we do here to help bring that community together to give you a big, big house with lots and lots of room and a big, big table with lots and lots of food. I know there's a lot of people that like to do potluck here and, and there's a lot of people that need help and there's a lot of, a lot of times you need, we need finances and money to do that. Um, I just wanted to point out another thing though in the, I just wanted to say and appreciate everyone who last month gave, <clears throat> gave to tithe and offerings. Uh, we had 33,696 in tithe this last month, which is super awesome. It's way up, uh, but just take a note to make sure to make this place a big, big house with lots and lots of room and lots and lots of people and lots of friendships. Uh, please donate to the local church budget, which is for today. If the deacons will please rise, we'll say the prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this great day and thank you for our house. I know there's some that aren't that don't have a big house, but we can make it a big, big house for everyone. Thank you for your blessings and thank you for the Sabbath. Amen. We think that we have the, the video fixed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and play that as the, as the deacons go around. Leviticus 27, 30 through 34, God says, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. He expresses this same idea in Numbers 18, 21. 2 Chronicles 31, 4 through 5, Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, Malachi 3, 10 through 12, Mark 12, 41 through 4 to 4, Luke 18, 9 through 14, and Deuteronomy 12, 5 through 6. Each shows what God says about tithe, and that tithe is to return the 10% of what God has given us. Let's say this week, you earned $100. 10% of that would be $10. This is the part that you return to God. When it comes to giving an offering, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Your offering comes from your heart, the part that remains is yours to manage according to your needs. One of our church's methods to return tithe and give offerings is using a tithe envelope. Filling out a tithe envelope is essential to ensuring your offering is distributed according to your preference. To fill out your tithe envelope, first, fill in your personal information in the top part of the form. Fill in your name, where you live, your church, and a date. Next, where it says tithe, you put the amount you are giving back to God. This is the only amount that has been designated at 10%. Then, you will see three areas of giving, local ministry, conference ministry, and world ministry. Your offering may be appointed to any of these needs by writing the amount you wish to give on the line next to the ministry. If you don't see the fund or project you'd like to give your offering to, feel free to write it on one of the blank lines. If you want to give your offerings to help fund the general budget of this church, you can put this amount on the local budget line. After you have finished recording your tithe and offering amounts, don't forget to put a total amount at the bottom so that the amount put inside the envelope is the same as the amount written on the total line. When we give, let's do it with love, gratitude, and eagerness to improve the lives of others. It will help grow within us the only joy that lasts when we do. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is found in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast.
told Jeremy it's really cool that he talked about the big house um, because um, Calvin and I are going to sing about having a mansion over the hilltop. <laughs> <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. It's <clears throat> good to see everybody out there this morning. Uh, yeah, Janelle had uh, told me about this song, which I knew about, but uh, she said she kind of liked it, and uh, could I help her do a song? And I said, yeah, we probably can. And ended up, I'm going to do the song, and she's just going to back me up today. So well, we're going to see how it turns out. And uh, hope you like it. And uh, it's good to have Kelly with us today. I haven't seen her in a long time. Good to see you, Kelly. Satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. to the one of the most important parts of our worship service. And it's when we lift up our voices, our hearts, our minds, our thoughts to God in prayer. What does prayer mean to you? Ellen G. White says that prayer is the key in the hands of faith that opens up the treasures of heaven. Prayer to me is like food for the soul. Jesus 
needed to have daily constant prayer and would separate himself to, uh, to just uh, go to pray to his father. If Jesus needed prayer in his life, how much more do we need prayer in our lives? So today, um, we're going to pray. And uh, every day Sabbath, we try to pray for a specific uh, concern or need. Uh, I know that today there's going to be a special um, meeting for the Sabbath school teachers. So I want to pray for that Sabbath school, all the Sabbath school teachers of our church. Primary, uh, ch children's department, uh, youth, and adults as well. How many teachers do we have here this morning? Can you please stand? All the teachers that have one or the other uh, functions as a um, children's department or adult department, even the assistants. I know we have more than that. I want to pray for you all. So, um, but also I want to pray uh, for uh, our, our speaker this morning that God may uh, bless him as he presents the message. I don't know if it's a solo or if it's a duo, but whatever it is, we're going to pray for you all. So let's bow our heads. Those that can kneel with me can please do that, and uh, we'll go to God in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you once more in this uh, very special day of Sabbath, a day that you have separated for us to just honor you and glorify your name. We thank you, dear Lord, because we're here. We want to just worship you and, 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 and hear your voice speak into our hearts. This morning, we have a special prayer for our teachers here at, the, at our uh, church, our Edmund Church. There's so much preparation that goes on for uh, uh, to present the uh, the lessons uh, to either our children, our youth, our adults. There's so much need for uh, for our children to hear the messages that you uh, have prepared and that the teachers present. We pray, dear God, that you may bless the teachers with knowledge, with understanding, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the understanding that they need so that they can bring forth the lessons, the message that our people need to hear. We're so thankful for their dedication. We're so thankful because you have called them to do a special ministry here at our church. So just bless them with your presence, with your knowledge, that they can continue to serve you and serve our people here at our church. We also pray, dear Father, for um, Brandon as he presents the message today. Whatever you have brought to his mind, to his thought, to his heart, we pray that you can just uh, be with him. Bless his home, bless Amy and the children's as well, that they may continue to serve you and that they can feel your presence daily in their homes. Be with us all as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we're just so thankful that you give us the privilege to worship you freely some do not have that privilege, but today we have that privilege here, and we just want to thank you for that. We love you. We thank you. Continue to be with us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, all. 
Uh, I want to preface this with this is not so much a sermon as um, a story, a testimony. But a wise man once told me that nobody hates on a speaker who lets them go to lunch early. So today is your lucky day. Today we're going to talk about God taking a man from the absolute rock bottom of life to a place where he is happy, healthy, successful, and redeemed solely by seeking, finding, and being faithful to God. It's a story about having it all, losing it all, and ultimately having more than he could ever dreamed of. If you see the picture up there, um, a couple of years ago, Amy Lou and I drove back to Arlington, Texas uh, to meet my new nephew, and we went tromping through the old neighborhood. That carport that you see there was my home for a short time. Uh, in October of 2004, on a dirty, dusty, garbage-packed, nasty couch behind that dope house is where I lived. It's where I called home. At that time, my wife uh, was in rehab. My kids were in protective services by the state of Texas. I was only allowed super supervised visitation once a week. I was homeless and I was unemployed. Drug addicted, I would spend my days going from dope house to dope house, looking for drugs, looking for a way to get high, sitting on that nasty mold ridden couch in this carport. I would shoot that poison into my veins in a desperate attempt to escape the absolute horror surrounding me and the pain that I had caused. I had no car. I had no real friends. I had alienated everyone I knew. I had not spoken to my family in weeks, if not months. I can't remember the last time that I had eaten. For all intents and purposes, I was completely and utterly alone. Just a short year earlier, I had had it all. I had a wife, two children, a very good job where I was respected. My talents were highly sought after. I was paid very well, had a company truck, season tickets to the Mavs and the Stars and the Rangers. But I lost it all. I had lost everything I'd always wanted and worked very hard to get. I had wanted to die. In that particular month, I had attempted suicide once, but the gun had thankfully misfired. That was the level of desperation that I had reached, and it was the absolute worst time of my life. Fast forward to November of 2012, just eight years later, I no longer find myself sleeping in a carport, no longer shooting drugs, children no longer in protective services. Rather, I am signing papers to close on my dream home. At the same time, I'm enrolling our children in Parkview Adventist Academy. I'm at a great job where I'm once again highly respected, paid extremely well. Talents are highly sought after. So how does a man go from the top and drop down to the bottom and now find himself back at the top of life again? It was God. It was, it was the big guy, Jesus, our Savior, my Savior. More importantly, it was my faith in him. God knew what I needed to get my head together. He knew exactly what was needed to drag this sorry excuse of a man out of the garbage to become what he needed me to be. What he had always wanted me to be, happy, healthy, a friend, a father, a husband, a son. There's a lot more to this story, and I encourage you to go to our YouTube page and, and research what's your story and watch it. You will hear the long version of all of this. Once Amy Lou and I had started to grow in our walk with Christ, everything had changed. Not quickly or overnight, to be sure. 
but slowly and gradually we built our lives. When we decided to get away from that life, God gave Amy Lou and I almost a year after we had lost our children and lost everything to rebuild our relationship. We were going to counseling and various things. Um, when we were together, we had children very early in our relationship, so we really had never had a lot of time to really be alone with each other. During that year, as we were rebuilding our lives, we were able to fall in love again with each other without drugs, without any outside influences. It was just her and I. We rebuilt our relationship. We rebuilt our family. But this time was different. This time we did it because we let God take the lead. Before I even really knew what was happening, God was, was in absolute control. We had surrendered fully to him. And this was a long time before we even became Adventists. We were just people, Christians, believers in Jesus. We had total submission to him. And like every other follower of Jesus, there has been several bumps in the road, several hard times. Been good times, great times. In the years that I have been walking with Christ, I have made and maintained some of the best friendships and relationships I have ever had. I have a life now overflowing with so much that it's hard to imagine that I once slept in that carport. I once let my life go so far that that was my home. So alone, so scared, and so desperate. As I have been faithful to God, my tithes, my attitude, and my love for my fellow man, he has surely been extremely faithful to me. I am not a rich man by no means, and obviously I have not missed a meal. I have not been without a home, and as a matter of fact, I now have two. God has been so good and faithful to me that I lack the words to describe the deep love that I have for him. Many of you have heard this story before, many have not. The reason I chose to talk about these things, while they can be embarrassing, painful, and hard to talk about, the real reason is, is, is the hope that there is someone in this church, either here or watching online, that has or is struggling with addiction and the absolute devastation it can wreak on your family and yourself. Whatever that addiction may be, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, pornography, sugar, prescription pills, whatever it is. Someone needs to hear that God is, is absolutely itching. He's chomping at the bit to help you, to redeem you, to give you the life you never thought you could ever have or ever let yourself believe you deserved. To show you that God is never too far away, that God does not give up on you. He does not ever give up on you. All you have to do is reach out and talk to him. God is always just waiting. And the moment that you make even the smallest movement towards him, he immediately reaches out and grabs your hand. God wants to show you that if he can take a drug-addicted, garbage pile of a man like I was and turn him into what I am today, he can do the same for you. All you have to do is talk to him. If you are that person, we want you to know that this church, the Edmond Seventh-day Adventist Church, wants you here. We want you to know that you are welcome, you are loved. We want to see you at Sabbath service, at potluck, at Sabbath school, on the Wednesday night prayer stream. 
however and whenever we want you here. But I ask the church, when people like me come through these doors, who are they going to meet? Will they be loved and welcomed, embraced? Will they be judged and turned away? Will they be like the Don Adams, the Mark Bostians, the Dave Hansons, the Nick Shepherds, the Larees, the Garys, the Rex, the Normas, the Trojans, the Litchfields, the Prouds? Will they welcome a stranger if they know what his past is and welcome him in completely? I only ask that question because it is so very important that we understand that there are a lot of us that have these issues. Our sons, our daughters, our cousins, they've made mistakes, terrible mistakes, terrible decisions. They've lost their way. And the worst thing for somebody who has lost their way is to feel alone. And when you walk into a church full of admirable people, like you all are, and they feel welcome, it will change their life. It will change their life for the better. It doesn't happen overnight, and it's, it's hard. It's uncomfortable sometimes to talk about these things, to talk about drugs and addiction and lust and porn and all these things that are taboo to talk about. Homelessness. But these are real issues. These are real problems, and they happen every day. And I guarantee you that most of the people in here know somebody who's gone through this. It is the most important thing that we can do as Christians to embrace these people, to welcome them in, to love them. Because what we have here at the Edmund Seventh-day Church is a wonderful, loving family, but we can't do anything if we can't get them in the doors. That is our challenge. Whenever you see a new face, a new person, or you know somebody in your church family that is hurting because of any of these issues, it is our job, it is our mandate to reach out to them love them without condemnation, share their burden, be with them, let them know that it's, it's okay. Because once we get them in the door and we can love on them and their life begins to change, there is nothing better. There is nothing more Christ-like than that simple action. And it's hard to do. It's hard to sit down and eat with publicans and sinners. It is hard to understand that by associating yourself with these people, you're not them. You don't get dirty because you help dirty people. God loves us all. Jesus said that he is not here for the righteous, but he is here for the sick. All of us are sick, and we all need each other. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, because we cannot do this on our own. That is it. That is the story for today, short and sweet. But I would like all of us to pray. And after we pray, if, if TJ would come up here, I'll stand over here. TJ can stand over here. If you have any, any issues, anything you want to talk about, anybody you know that feels this way, that is going through this way, we're here for you. We want to pray with you. We want to help you get through this tough time. Amen. Praise God. 
Amen. You do. Amen. You do. You. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray together. Lord, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for our testimonies. We thank you for all of us that you have drug out of the, the depths and the depravity. We praise you for sending your Holy Spirit to comfort us in our time of need. We know that our time here on this earth is temporary, that there will be and in your grace. Lord, if there's anybody in here watching, will watch, who needs prayers, let them know that we are there for them. Let them know that we, we want to be with them. We want to have them close. We want to let them know that they are welcome in our house, in your house. Let them know that comfort will come. It is not easy. We know that you forgive our sins, but you don't erase the consequences. We live with those for the rest of our lives, but we know that that one day when you come back and you take us up into the sky with you, that we will be redeemed, forgiven, and new. We know that that day is coming. It cannot come fast enough in this broken garbage pile of a world that we live in today. But we know it's coming soon. And until that day comes, we just ask that you continue to be with us in all of our pain and all of our desperation. Give us the hope and the courage and the strength that we need to move forward every day. We pray all these in your name. Amen. We here at the Edmond Seventh-day Adventist Church want to offer a safe and engaging place for you to come to know Jesus. Our mission is to know Jesus, to reflect his character, and share his message. Now, while the church building is open once again, we realize that many of you, for varying circumstances, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's distance, you can't be here in person, but we still want to connect with you. So please, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website, edmundadventist.org. We look forward to connecting with you and walking alongside you as you come to know Jesus better. Thank you.